everyone, Charlotte here. Welcome to this kitty crochet video tutorial on how to make this crochet cat collar like the one that you can see here. This one I've made up for Melba um, previously with two colors. Today I'll, I'll just be demonstrating in one color. It's easier to demonstrate just with the one, one strand. So before we move on, I just want to talk about a few safety issues with cat collars. So if you have a cat that roams freely outdoors, unsupervised at some times, then it's important that they wear a collar, um, you know, to be quickly identified. But it's really important that the collar that they wear is safe. So ideally, um, your collar will have a safety release clasp and it will also be non-stretch and it will be not too wide so the quick release uh, clasps you can access those on the internet this is not specifically one of those although this one would with enough pressure release but there are specific safety release clasps that you can buy online so if you have a free roaming outdoor cat then i really recommend that you get one of those those clasps to make up this project. The th second thing is, is that it's important that it's non-stretch. So if a collar gets caught and it's stretchy, what can sometimes happen is that the cat has enough room to get their paw in between the collar and the and their neck. Now that also can happen if the collar is not well fitted, but if that happens, then it can actually cut off circulation to the paw and cause quite a lot of damage to their paw and not to mention their neck. So it can be quite a dangerous situation. So you want it that your cat, there's no way that they can fit their paw in between the, the collar and their neck. So non-stretchy. The third thing is, is that it's no more than, let's say, about a centimetre thick. Obviously, you don't want it too thin because it could be uncomfortable, but you want it to be not too thick. Again, all of these things help to reduce the chances that your cat gets caught on anything. So this one that I've made for Melba here, like I said, it's not specifically a quick release clasp, but she's a 100% indoor cat. The only time that she has a collar on is or go, goes outside is when she is... Um, well, you know, it's it's sometimes a good idea to have for indoor cats in case they escape to have a collar on. But when Mel when Mel was inside, she doesn't tend to have a collar. But um, when we go out on our adventures, she has a collar. So um, if she accidentally or for whatever reason she escapes from us out of her leash, out of her harness, she's at least got this back up. So this one, um, why we use the D-ring is that it has a ID tag that goes onto it that's got our phone number on it in case she um, escapes. I mean, not many people are wandering around with a microchip scanner and you unfortunately you can't always count on them taking her to a vet. So, you you know, taking your cat to a vet if they find them. So um, it's important that they you have a, an ID tag on your, your cat's collar so they, they can, you can be called as, as quickly as possible. So I think that's all I want to say about the safety. So really consider those things if your cat's an indoor cat, an outdoor cat, and which clasp you need to get. Please take the time to get a, a breakaway clasp. And apart from that, what you'll also need is some yarn. Now I'm using this 100% cotton yarn today. Um, you could use anything that, like I said, is non-stretch, anything that you can crochet. So um, paracord, a fine paracord would work. You could use, I've also used a, um, I've made a collar with a, a, a soft twine. It's a, a twine yarn that um, is it's softer and non-scratchy. So it's not, you know, like traditional twine. I've also used that. Um, but anything, cotton is, is ideal. Anything non non stretchy, so I'll be using that today. Uh, you'll also need a crochet hook. Now I'm today I'm using a two point five millimeter crochet hook. Um, you could use perhaps a three millimeter, but you probably not want to go any larger than that. Just bear in mind that your whatever hook you use, it needs to fit through the hole in your clasp. 
So a three fits through here for me, but I'm, today I'm going to use a, a 2.5 millimeter hook. So is it focusing? Yeah. So it fits through the eyes in my clasp nice and easily. So you might also need um, a smaller crochet hook, and you'll see why as we move along. This one here is one of those um, lace crochet hooks, and it's got a, quite a sharp point, and it's nice and fine. I think it might be a one or uh, sorry, one point five or a, or a two. Not exactly sure of the gauge; it's not written on here. But um, yeah, so you might you might need that. So have a smaller crochet hook handy as well. Uh, you'll need uh, a D-ring, so this is to attach your identity tag. Uh, you could use an O-ring, but it just you just need to make sure it's something. So you could use a, a ver well, they probably don't come small enough, but you need something that you can attach a um, identity tag to. So that you can see here that this has got a little break that with pliers I can attach that on. Um, yeah, you could use an O-ring as well. Like I said, just make sure it's got a break in it somewhere. I was going to say use a key ring, um, key ring, you know, ring, but um, they probably don't come small enough. But you just want to be able to attach a, a collar to it, uh, sorry, a tag to it. So this, these are both one centimetre. So across here, they're both, is that focusing? Yeah, the, the uh, width here is one centimetre, as is here. Okay, moving on, you'll also need a needle just to work in your ends. Now, it needs to be a, a larger eye with a quite a sharp point. So, you can't really use your normal darning needles for this. It'll need to be need to be sharper. And then finally, the last couple of things you'll need is something to snip off your ends. And of course you'll need a tape measure. So this needs to be made, the collars need for safety, they need to be made specifically for an individual cat. So make sure that you measure your cat's neck circumference nice and snugly. Um, not too, not, you know, obviously not super tight, but it needs to be snug for that safety reason that it's harder to get caught if it's more snug fit. Um, and then you'll need your tape measure to, to make sure you're measuring your project and, and uh, making it the right size. So let's get started. So to start with you'll just need your your crochet hook, your clasp and your yarn. So actually just before we move, in, move on, just to let you know what techniques you'll need to to have under your belt for this making this project, you'll need to know how to slip knot onto your hook which I'm just going to do now. Um, so you do that however you know how to do that. And then um, you'll need to know pretty much it's just single crochet. You'll only need to know how to single crochet. And then once you, you've got the little technique down with what we're doing, it's, it's a really simple, it, and it could be a big, beginner project. The only slight difficulty is, is that for the first few rows, you need to work quite tightly, so it can be a little bit fiddly getting your hook in and out of the stitches for the first, at least the first couple of rows. And then there's this technique we use in making the cord where we work into um, what I call the, the vertical loop, but it's a little diagonal um, loop on the side of the, the project that we'll be working into, and you'll, that'll become clear as we, as we move along, so I'll, I'll certainly demonstrate that. So basically just single crochet is all you need to know. So take your clasp, you've slip knotted onto your hook, and place your clasp in between your working end and your tail end. So we're just going to single crochet. So for row one we're adding the clasp straight onto the project. So it's just a, a row of single crochets incorporating the clasp. Okay, so my yarn is split over top of the clasp. So place your hook inside the, the hole and then pull up your yarn, pull it through and then single crochet over top of your clasp. So get through both of those loops. 
Now, this is where, like I said, it sometimes can be a little bit tricky at this first couple of rows because what you want to make sure that you're doing is that you're pulling these nice and tight. Let's just move that out of the frame. That you're pulling these nice and tight. Okay, both ends. So pull the tail nice and tight and make sure you've pulled that first single crochet nice and tight. And then we'll work the second single crochet. So yarn go, uh, sorry, hook goes through, yarn over, pull through, and then single crochet, finish a single crochet over top of the clasp. Okay, so again, pull that nice and tight. And then we'll do that two more times. So pull through and single crochet. Oops, my yarn split there. Actually, sorry, I'm just going to go back to that second stitch because the yarn split. There we go. So, so I'm going to work my second nice and tight. So again, here, here's where it's a little bit tricky, so a little bit fiddly. You just want to be nice and tight working for these first few. And number four. So we've done that first row of single crochet and we've incorporated the clasp. Okay. So how I work is I have the clasp facing me. The front of the clasp is facing me when I'm, I'm working that first row. Okay, now we turn the work. And in this first row, we chain one. So that's just for this, sorry, the second row, this first turn. Chain one. And then we're just going to place a single crochet in each of those four stitches. So this is just to secure this nicely onto the clasp. So that's one, and two, again working quite tightly, three, and this, this fourth stitch which was the first one that you did, you'll only have one strand to work under in that one. So just work under that first stitch so I've just got one strand to work through so that's clear yeah one strand to work through there and finish your single crochet okay so that's the start of your project so you've incorporated your clasp and you've done these first two rows of single crochet just four single crochets so here's where the the pattern changes so turn your work so no chain from here on out until the the other end, but no chain for now, okay? So you can see that you've got four stitches. One, two, three, four. So we're just working into the last three here. So no chain, just working into the second stitch with a single crochet. And again, it can be a little bit tight because you need to pull tight. So just bear that in mind. You might need to be a little bit patient with these first couple of rows. So we've done a single crochet in the second stitch. And then we'll do a single crochet in the third stitch. And now what we're, we're going to be doing is working into, um, and for this first stitch, it's quite difficult to see and you'll only have one of them. So this is where I'm talking about these vertical and they're kind of diagonal really but they're these these loops so if you turn the the project towards you you'll see in for this first one you'll only have one you'll see that there's a little and this is where your smaller hook might come in handy you'll see that there's a little loop sitting down the side here And again, this first one will be tricky, but find that little loop that sits down the side. Okay, and I've got it there. Okay, so I've just used my smaller gauge hook to get in there and find, for this first one there'll only be one loop, okay? 
and so I'll just take that one out and then I'll use my actual hook that I'm using for the project and then you'll work your single crochet into that little side loop okay now well as we move along it will become easier to see let me move, just move that out of the way okay so turn your work skip that first stitch work into the second stitch with a single crochet and then the third stitch a single crochet now what what tends to happen is that that, that second stitch can be a, sorry third stitch the second stitch that you're actually working but this when you're working into the third stitch in the row it can be a little bit tricky to see because these these side loops here will start to cover slightly this third stitch so make sure you work into that third stitch and then now they're becoming clearer to see when you turn your work you've got these two loops down the side here and from here on it'll be two loops not just one as it was in that first row so you want to pick up that first loop and this is when the, that smaller gauge hook is really handy so it's there and I'm, I really hope that's coming up clear on the camera. It takes a little bit, if you've never done this technique before, it takes a little bit to get used to finding that loop. But persevere, just check out when you get to the end of the row, you'll see that sitting in this direction, you've got these two, these two loops. There's one and there's two sitting in here. It's just sitting underneath there. So you're just working into the first one, the top one. So now I've loosened that up slightly. I'll work my hook in underneath and finish my third single crochet of the row into that, that loop. Okay, so we've done the first two, first two rows, another two rows, so that's four rows. And turn. This is row five. So just work the same. First single crochet goes into the second stitch then work into the third stitch and then and as I said it's getting these little loops will get clearer and clearer so there's my there's the loop that I want to work into here and it's they're starting they kind of start to pop up so that's the second one down there but this is the first one that I want to work into here so then I insert my hook into that little vertical loop yeah it's coming up quite nicely except it's the yarn split a little yeah there it is and then work your third single crochet in the row into that last little diagonal loop okay so we're starting to get a pattern here now we're moving on to row six so now you'll you'll think about attaching your d-ring around this area row five row six row seven depending exactly on where you want it to sit so let me just work one more row here and again hopefully oh, let me bring this really really close so you can see here that's there's got we've got these two little loops here yeah so this is the one Actually, sorry, I've pointed to the wrong one. It's got these two little loops here. So this one and this one. And so I want to work into this top one that's kind of popping out a little bit. I might need my smaller hook again for this one. Just to make sure I loosen that slightly. And then I'll get my two and a half in there. and work a single crochet okay so we're starting to get our pattern emerging as you can see and then I think I'll put my D ring when did where did I put it on on this one yeah about here let's put it on here so this will be row seven I'll put it on at row seven so you could have put it on at row five row six 
whatever, um, wherever you think it's best. So you turn your work, and obviously you want to make sure that the D-ring is on the same side as the front of your clasp. So don't make the mistake of putting it on the wrong side. So lie it flat with the, the edge against the top of your project. And then we're going to work just over top of the D-ring. So if you're, the row that you're choosing to put it on actually means that um, you need to put it in the back, that's fine. Just the same thing as you're working through the stitch and through the D-ring. So if it's forward, so I need it forward because the front of the clasp is forward, then I just work through the D-ring first. Okay. And then do your single crochet, your first single crochet over top of the D-ring and then also the next single crochet over top of the D-ring. And make sure you're pulling these ones nice and tight. Okay, so those there's your two single crochet stitches over the D-ring. And then move that out of the way. You might have to shimmy it down slightly. And then, again, you're looking for these two loops under here. So that doesn't go through the D-ring this for this last stitch, okay? You just pull up your... I just need to loosen it slightly and get my hook down in there. So a little bit fiddly working around the D-ring. Get your hook in there and then pull up that third single crochet in that row. And then you can just move the D-ring back across so it's centered on your project. And then turn. And so it's the same pattern from here until you've got the length that you want. So working, again, this row, this next row after the D-ring will be a little bit tighter because you've pulled them quite tight to secure that D-ring. So through the third stitch. And so it's just repeating the same pattern. Finding that side loop, there it is. And single crochet on the end there. Okay. Now, for now, it looks like the bottom is wider than the main project, and it is, of course, because we have four stitches at the bottom, and we only have three that we're working across here. But we'll, that's where the sewing in comes in, into it. We're going to just pull that across and make sure that... Um, so when we, when we thread the needle and, and work it through, it's going to pull it in line with the, the rest of the project. Okay, so keep working, just turning your work, just one final time running through this, this sequence, so skipping the first stitch, second stitch is a single crochet, third stitch a single crochet, and then into that vertical loop on the side with a single crochet. So you'll see that it'll become start to become easier and easier to find that little vertical loop. For these first few rows it's it's a little bit tricky. But you'll get there. It's just you've just got to persevere, a bit of patience and you'll you'll uh, you'll start to see it emerging as quite clear. So you can see here now this these as I'm starting to work into the more of the main bulk of the project. So you can see my my um, my little side loops are getting quite obvious. It's this one here, and it's they almost pop up for you, <laughs> start to pop up for you, which is very convenient. And then turn. Okay, so keep working. Continue on. Um, until you've reached the length that you need for your cat. Just bear in mind that you're measuring from the centre of the clasp and including the clasp in the measurement. Um, and yeah, keep working until you've reached the circumference that you need for a, a snug fit for your cat collar. So I'll catch you once I've finished uh, my length. So catch you soon. Okay, hi everyone. I'm back with uh, the length that I 
want this to be. So I've worked, you can see um, this nice pattern has emerged as I hope it has for you as well. So I'm at the length that I need for Melba's, um, Melba's collar. So make sure that you're measuring the, obviously measure with the, the measuring tape, but also just quickly check it on your cat and make sure that it's the right circumference for them. Not too tight, but um, nice and snug. So to finish off, we're going to be, um, yeah, working, um, to join the the class now first of all we're going to do a row of um, single crochet so what we're going to do is as we've, we've been doing we're going to skip that first stitch and we're going to add two single crochets into the next stitch so that's two single crochets into the second stitch and then two single crochets into the third stitch Let's just make sure we're pulling up both loops. Yep. So you're back to the four. You're back to the four um, single crochets that you need to attach your the other end of your clasp. Okay. So turn now. The way to do this is um, to place your work. Along. Now ideally if you can finish on a row, now hopefully this will make sense, ideally if you can finish um, so that you put the front of the, the clasp facing you when you finish that would be great. Now what it just means is that it'll just be, because what will happen is you'll have this underneath you'll have this, it'll be obvious where you've attached your clasp and it's best and neatest if that's on the underside of the clasp. Now hopefully that makes sense. But let's just say ideally you want to finish so when you're attaching your clasp, the front is facing you. So both ends, when you're attaching your clasp, the front is facing you. So we're just going to work um, single crochets over top of the clasp. So um, chain one and then work so you've got four single crochets to work into so work into that first stitch and then through the clasp so you're just single crocheting over top of the clasp so that's one pull them nice and tight and then move to the second stitch through the clasp and over now again, make sure that you're getting that nice and tight. The fourth, work through. And single crochet over top of your clasp. And then final and last stitch, the fourth one. Okay, so yeah, so now you'll be able to see what I what I mean. So it's obvious where you've single crocheted. So if that can be underneath, it's just a little bit neater. So on the other side, it looks the same on both on both ends. So this is the front of my clasp. It looks the same on both ends because I've worked with those single crochets on the inside. Okay, so now to finish off, just yarn over, pull through, cut off a tail, and take your your needle. So I'll just get rid of my yarn there. So to finish this this off, make sure everything's pulled nice and tight. So thread your thread your needle with your end, and then what you're going to do is you're going to work. So taking the 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 tail, you're going to work it underneath those loops, okay? And then you're going to pull it through. This bit can be a little bit tricky. 
Okay, so I've got that through. Like I said, that can be a little bit tricky. Now, here's where you can pull it a little bit tighter so your, so your four stitches that you've started with becomes more even with the three that you're working in your project. So you can just pull that a little and just make that, see how that makes, just makes that a little bit narrower. And then go through the other side as well. So turn your work over and work through the other side. And just even that up. So pull through the other side as well. And then just pull that tight, take your needle off. And then if you if you feel like you want to, you could go back through the other side again. I'm just gonna do that twice. Snip off my snip off my tail end. And that's one side done. So you'll do that on both sides. So you can see that what that does is that pulls it in so uh, it's it's more even. So the four stitches are more even with the three of the of the project. So just you'll do that again on of course the other end. Okay, so I've got that through. Like I said, that can be a little bit tricky. Now here's where you can pull it a little bit tighter. So your, so your four stitches that you've started with becomes more even with the three that you're working in your project. So you can just pull that a little and just make that, see how that makes, just makes that a little bit narrower. And then go through the other side as well. So turn your work over and work through the other side. Even that up. So pull through the other side as well. And then just pull that tight, take your needle off. And then if you if you feel like you want to, you could go back through the other side again. I'm just gonna do that twice snip off my snip off my tail end and that's one side done so you'll do that on both sides so you can see that what that does is that pulls it in so uh, it's it's more even so the four stitches are more even with the three of the of the project so just you'll do that again on of course the other end okay so I'm just finishing off that other tail end. This is why you need that quite fine and sharp needle to work this this through and it can be a little bit tricky. Just wiggle it to get it through and then pull it a bit so you get that narrowing effect, that draw string effect. Okay, and then finally snip off that last end. And your collar is done. Just even that up. So yeah, your collar is done, well done.